Hey, it's only 1037, Miss Pat. Hey, everybody. Chapter 3 of Mitzi Moon, book number 6. Bars and boxcars. The grand evening eventually winds down, and by the time I drag myself across the alley to the bookshop, my feet are shot. I kick off the murderous, murderous heels and leave them where they lie, just inside the heavy metal side door. The indignant wisp of my grandmother's ghost pops into view with another worldly moan. She wags a ring and sconced finger at me. I know ten women who would kill to wear those shoes for five minutes. She always says that. For five minutes. They can have them. My feet felt better after an eight-hour shift at the coffee shop back in Sedona. I push through her insubstantial mistiness and unhook the chain at the bottom of the wrought iron spiral staircase. The thick carpets of the second floor rear books loft feel like heaven under my sore toes. <laughs> I turn to lean on the banister and alternately, al alternately stretch my calves as I inhale the enchanting scent of books. Ah, the scent of books. I always love the library and the smell of books. The night light, moonlight, seeping through the rows of slumped glass windows at the front fill my shop with a dusting of magic. The film school dropout in me can easily picture a long, slow dolly shot that pushes in on a swirling mystery of Rio! Game on! Pow at it! You scared the life out of me. My heart is racing and my breath is coming in short gasps. There's nothing quite like being lost in a spooky daydream only to have a real live beastie leap out at you, leap at you out of nowhere. The fright saps my last reserves. Come on, you little terror. It's time for bed. Leading the procession of human, ghost, and barely tame caracal. I, like it. I reach up and pull the candle sconce that serves as the secret handle to opening the sliding bookcase door to my gorgeous hidden apartment. Graham simply vanishes through the wall ahead of me. Swapping my designer gown for an old t-shirt, I collapse onto my 800 thread count sheets. And hit the button that closes my blackout shades. I don't want any over-eager sunshine ruining my sleep in. Unfortunately, my phantom roommate does not share my plans for 10 to 12 hours of restorative sleep. Grams keeps me up, begging for details about the soiree. As near as I can tell, the thing she misses most about being alive is high society. I would think you'd be just a teeny bit more interested in the train robbery, Grams. I'm tired and a little peeved by the lack of praise for my discovery. She completely ignores my attempts to return the conversation to the clairvoyant message I received and my sleuthy call to Eric. What color did you say Amaryllis's suit was? Grams clutches one of her many strands of pearls. I exhale loudly with exhaustion. For the last time, I think it was charcoal gray. Can't you just be pleased that I recognized it as a DKNY and let me get some sleep? Oh, that would look lovely with her coloring. She floats closer to my large four-poster bed. Was Jacob wearing? Rio! The caracal's warning echoes through the shade-darkened apartment. See, now you're even testing Powacket's patience. I throw a feather pillow at Ghost Ma. She dematerializes before the pillow makes contact, and a haunting voice calls out from beyond, Sleep is overrated, says the apparition, I retort. 
A moment later, she flickers back into view, and her ethereal expression is laced with sorrow. What I miss the most is being with people. Not that you aren't the most wonderful granddaughter in the whole world, but I miss the energy of a social gathering. I miss the compliments of eligible men. I'm sure you know what I mean. I lie on my bed and stare up at the coffered ceiling. Do I know what she means? Men have always been more of a challenge, challenging distraction. I purposely keep my shattered heart locked away and leave men dangling at arm's length. But Eric is different, I think. Sorry to butt in, sweetie. It sounds like you need to talk. It's all right, Grams. Losing my mother before I even hit puberty meant that I never had any guidance in the romance department. It seems almost fitting that a 60-something ghost has chosen to look 35 will be my guide through the murky, ever-shifting landscape of love. I'll do my best, dear. Fair enough. But you can get out of my head now. I'll ask the questions of my choosing, not yours, deal. It's all a bit blurry, but I'll do my best. That's as close to an agreement as I'm going to get. You once told me that you were happiest with Cal when my dad was little. How did you know? I mean... What about how you used to feel about Odell? Do you wish you'd done things differently now that you're dead? <laughs> Ghost my shimmers uncomfortably dead. Propping a few pillows behind my head, I settle in for a girl's or a girl and ghost night. Is that offensive? Should I call you life challenged or something? <laughs> Oh, Mitzi, Graham giggles until she snorts. I didn't mean it that way. I just don't feel dead. I keep forgetting. It's not until someone like Twiggy or Jacob comes into the bookstore and completely ignores my greeting that I remember I'm not human. I'm sorry, Grams. If it's any consolation, I feel like you're still alive, and I'm always forgetting that I'm the only one who can see and hear you. She shrugs. Well, except Pi. He seems to be on my frequency. She swirls closer and concentrates on giving her ethereal limbs some heft while she pats my shoulder. Now, about your relationship. Let's talk about the birds and the bees. I press a pillow over my own face and mumble, Oh, brother, let's not. Pulling the pillow back, I chew on my lip for a moment before I continue. What I really want to know is how you know when it's more than just a fling. I mean, my mom clearly cared for Jacob, but they had a one-night stand, even though she ended up pregnant. She never told him or tried to contact him again. I never understood that. Grams floats up toward the ceiling. There's so many levels of connection. When Odell came back from the war, we had an instant and powerful connection. My promise to wait for Cal evaporated in the face of that passion. If they hadn't fought so bitterly when Cal finally came home, I might never have turned to alcohol. Do you wish you'd stayed with Odell? Sure, all the time, but it would have destroyed us. She sighs and drifts toward the scallop back chair by the coffee table. Look what happened to my second husband, Max. We partied our way across Europe and our excesses ended up taking his life. And one of my kidneys, sure, that fateful accident was the thing that opened my eyes and motivated me to get help and get sober, but that could have been Odell. Maybe you would have gotten sober sooner for Odell, I shrug wistfully. That's the worst lie you can tell yourself. You never use someone else as the excuse to get sober or drunk. Taking responsibility for my actions was what allowed me to rebuild things with Cal. Those years we shared raising Jacob were some of my best. Do you think Eric is my cow? Do you love him? 
My heart beat suddenly thuds in my ears. The only person I ever loved was my mother. But now I'm building a wonderful relationship with my father. And I love Ghost and Ma so much it hurts. Shimmering tears spring from her translucent eyes. Oh, Mitzi, I love you too. Grams, you know I'm not comfortable with mushy stuff. If I need to focus and figure out how I feel about I need to focus and figure out how I how I feel about Eric. I'm not sure if I'm ready to be exclusive, but I don't think I could stand to see him dating anyone else. Is that love? It's a little jealous and possessive, but it's a start, sweetie. I've never felt like this before. I always push people away and act like a jerk before they get too attached. I don't want to push Eric away. Is is that it? She kindly covers her smirk with her hand and offers gentle encouragement. For you, it sounds like the beginning of something wonderful. Pi slides his head under my hand and purrs noisily as I scratch between his tufted ears. The rhythmic sound lulls me towards sleep and a massive yawn possesses my entire body. I gotta get some sleep, Grams. I won't have the strength for proper snooping if I don't get a little shut-eye. Good night, my dear. Good night. That's all of chapter three, and I know that wasn't much, but I don't know. I'm getting sleepy already, so. <laughs> I'm still trying to work on 11 things over here. I love y'all. I really do. Be sweet, don't be ugly, and I hope to see you tomorrow. Get away, get away time.